So um, I'm just here to talk about a tool that I made for people that are running uh, just web apps that you need to put into maintenance mode. Uh, it's called wrench mode and the goal is to just make downtime suck a little bit less when you have to bring your website down. So if you would, please everyone get out your phone, whatever mobile device you have and go to this address. Like really I do want some help with this because this is sort of like a load test. <laughs> I'd like to load test this with like several people, you know, running it at once. Like mostly I've just done it by myself at home. And it ends with an uppercase I followed by a P. So that last one is an I, not an L or anything like that. So, um, and while everybody's bringing this up, I thought I would tell a little fairy tale. You know, people ask, well, why, why do I need to break my website down? Why do I need to go into maintenance mode in the first place? Um, so a good example that I, that I came up with is, Let's say that you're working on a toy app. I love working on side projects, toy apps, you know, things like that, showing them off to my friends, you know, hey, look at this thing that I made. It, you know, makes up joke insults or Mad Libs or something like that, that sort of thing. You, you're making one of these, it's going really well, and then you show it to some friends and bam, like it winds up on the front page of Hacker News or, you know, Reddit or something like that, and suddenly you're getting like thousands of hits per hour and the Heroku toy hobby database that you've got running behind it is just collapsing under the load. And so you tell yourself, crap, I want this thing to work really well, I want it to work nice, so I need to upgrade, I'm gonna go ahead and spend the 50 bucks and upgrade to the you know, Heroku moderate size database or whatever, but you can't just do that while the app is running live, you actually have to bring it down to then switch to that. It's easy to do, it takes about 10 minutes, but for that 10 minutes, your website's down, people are getting like 500 errors or like 502 proxy sort of stuff and you look terrible and you know and this is on your big day so you want to have some way to sort of make things look nice um, so that's why you'd have to bring it down and if you're if you're on Heroku you can do Heroku maintenance mode which looks terrible and if you're not on Heroku if you're on like AWS or something like that well enjoy your 500s so um, that's why I made wrench mode and I'll just give a quick demo of what it does so you, could, you should all be looking at a website somewhat like this, right? Who's seeing this? Raise, raise your hand if you're seeing this. Okay, good, everybody went there. So with wrench mode, I can go in and, ooh, this guy does not like this small screen size here. There we go. Um, basically what it allows you to do is go in and bring your website down for maintenance. So let's say we're gonna go down because we are, we are upgrading the database. And so we tell our users, Give us 10 minutes. We'll be right back. Okay, and that drops us into wrench mode. And then the next time somebody comes or somebody refreshes or something like that, they're taken to a very nice, nicely styled, nice looking maintenance page. And one of the things that's really cool about it, so if you guys refresh, you should all see that on your phones. Anybody seeing it? Anybody getting it? Okay, now keep your eyes on your phone and you should be able to see that you can also get live updates. So you're making good progress on your database and you say, hey, it's going well. Did it show up? Anybody see it? <laughs> and then you say like, you know, it's taking a little longer than I thought because it always does. <laughs> and then you say, Postgres you know, Exactly. And you're sweating, <laughs> you're, you know, you're sweating because today's your big day and you're like, ah, it's taking longer than I thought, so we'll be back in, you know, five minutes, you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then it's like, no, wait, make that 10 minutes. So, so the point is, this whole time, they would have been seeing 500s or timeouts or a blank page, but in this case, you're actually actively engaging with people and they're not getting, you know, thrown away and they're, you know, you look a lot better than you would otherwise. And so when things are finally done, and everybody watch your phones, when you're finally done, you turn wrench mode off and everybody that's on it is just automatically immediately redirected back and they're back to the website. And so it's a very clean and smooth way of dealing with maintenance. What's your question? I was just about to explain how it works. And I'm actually, I'm really glad to get that question. That's, that's a really good question because the next slide is, 
there should be all kinds of alarms going off. Like, how does this work? The, you know, is this some kind of weird proxy? Like, what's going on here? So I'm, I'm, I'm glad that, uh, that we had some of those, you know, previous presentations because it's actually, uh, a, it's a two-part thing. One part is a rack middleware layer. So um, wrench mode itself on the server, is, it's an Elixir app. Um, and so it basically, sits there, I mean, that's the it's, the, it's a Phoenix Elixir app, and that's what you're interacting with when you're, you know, posting updates and things like that. But then on the Ruby side, there is a rack middleware layer that all it does is in a separate thread, it makes a connection to the wrench mode server and periodically checks the status. And so the thing is, it, what's important about that is that it's, it's in a separate thread, it's not getting in the way of your main request thread. And so I wanted to show, now that we've had an introduction to rack, this is, this is where the magic happens in the, you know, inside the rack middleware. And so if should display wrench mode, you know, display wrench mode, else app.call just says, all right, pass it through the rack middleware stack up to the next layer, like, and what's important is if should display wrench mode does not make an external server call or anything like that. It checks a local variable that is updated by a separate thread. Does that, does that make sense? Like, I always wanna make sure that people understand that. That's because it is not, it does not impact performance on your server at all. It's actually designed to fail open. If the main wrench mode server is down, it automatically switches into open mode. Like, so it's like, it does not harm or impact or anything like that. It's very safe. This is, I mean, this is the rack middleware layer. This part's open source. You can take a look at this. So. So I'm, Mike, I'm, in all my years of Rails developer, I've not dived this deep into rack. So maybe this is a stupid question. Um, so, it is running on the deploy instance on Heroku, and so it's not because there's a 500 error because of the database that this is loading. You're actually it, it is it, instead of routing to the the monk, whatever the, the normal passenger mongrel or whatever Heroku is using, it's going to your middleware instead. Well, so it's, it's a good, that's another good question. In, in this particular setup, your main application server needs to be running. Like, if you, if you, like, like let's say that you had to bring your website down for maintenance because you're physically moving to a different server. You're moving from Heroku to AWS. This isn't going to work. I've got some plans for ways that it will, but in this particular setup, this is just the easiest way to get it all installed. Like, and so if you have to, like, if you're switching from Puma to Thin or one of those other, like, weird where you're like, I have nothing to do today, so let me switch my underlying web server. Like, um, if you're doing that kind of stuff, then wrench mode in this particular setup won't work. But for the vast majority of your downtime maintenance kind of stuff where you're just like, I need to, you know, upgrade a database this, or I need, I want to like, my favorite is like renaming a, a database column. Yes, it can be done with zero downtime, and it's a total pain in the ass to do it with zero downtime. And if you just take 10 minutes or five minutes of downtime, it's like, five minutes of downtime versus like 10 hours of development time to get it absolutely right when you have to like rename columns and all that kind of crap. So, um, all right, so, but yeah, the, the, the important thing to realize is that it's not, it's not some weird proxy. It does not have any performance impact at all. Like, it, you know, and it fails open. If for whatever reason the wrenchmode.com server is down, everything's fine. Um, and so what's next? So, and the other thing, there's a feature that I'm working on that I think will be really, really cool, and that is the ability to whitelist IPs. For instance, your IP. So you bring it down for maintenance, you move to your new database, you wanna make sure it works. I don't know how many times I've been like, well, I think that worked, I guess we'll see what the masses say. <laughs> like, <laughs> and so you'll be able to go to, you'll be able to go to wrenchmode.com, and instead of saying resolve wrench mode, you'll be able to say whitelist me, let me in, and then when you go to it next, You'll be able to get in, poke around, make sure that you're not getting, you know, database connection, such and such, you know, fail. Everyone else is still seeing the wrench mode page. And then when you're done, you say, okay, let them all in. We're done. So, um, wrenchmode.com, it's up. It works. Like, I've had it running for a while. I've used it on a few of my own websites. I would love it if people would use it. I'd love if you hit me up with questions. Um, Justin. Um, I don't know if we have your own custom theme yet, but I actually, I have been working with a, a friend of mine who's a designer, and he went out and found like a bunch of like really nice, like background styles, so you can choose, you know, from a bunch of different ones to, you know, to style how you want it to look. Um, and, and one of the things that I will say is, I'm, I actually, I, I push back against a lot of customization, mainly because 
like, I love this thing. I think it's kind of fun. I think you as a developer should never see this. Like, you should never be on this page. Like, the reason you're using wrench mode is because you want to bring something down for maintenance and then get it back up and running and then work on your app. Like, and so like, I, I don't think, I don't like, cause somebody, you know, somebody was like, can I have my own custom CSS and all this other custom stuff? And I, I don't know, I may do that at some point, but like, I would never want to do that. Like, I just want to bring the website down and have it not look like crap. Like, you know, Heroku maintenance mode looks terrible. You know, and all the other like, you know, maintenance mode options, they look awful. And so I just wanted to have like a decent looking maintenance mode. And I like the live updates and all that sort of stuff. And then, boom, it's back and, you know, we're back to running on the regular app. What about like corporate uh, grading, for example? Well, that brings me to, th I always want to mention pricing. Um, it's free. It's free for exactly what I've showed. If you're like a small developer working on toy projects on Heroku and that kind of stuff, it's always going to be free. Any kind of that like custom stuff, and it's just going to say powered by wrench mode at the bottom on like, you know, on, the, uh, on that page. If you want to get rid of that, if you want to have like custom corporate branding, I'm thinking about having some kind of like uh, payment system for it. I love the idea of thinking about how to charge for it because like I don't, I don't really want to charge a monthly fee because like it makes no sense, you know, monthly fee for something that you rarely use. But I'd love to charge like a hundred bucks to hit the on, you know, <laughs> like I'm going to charge you every time you use it, you know, on like a corporate scale sort of setup. But so, so yeah, I think, I think it would be useful for, for a lot of corporate stuff too. Um, and as long as you're willing to say, you know, powered by wrench mode, you can use it right now. Eventually there will be some kind of like corporate, you know, unbranded version that you can use yourself. Does that answer it? So, so is it periodically that the like client, like your app, is pulling the wrench mode server, or vice versa? Periodically, the so you've got your main application server. Yeah. It is. It has a. It spawns up a separate thread that sleeps 99.9% .9 of the time, and then checks wrench mode status. Like every five seconds, it just doesn't get. So, so yeah, it is. It is. You know, an outbound request from your server. Does it get? Checks. You know, am I in wrench mode? Okay, no, I'll go back to sleep. Live updates actually hits your server, or does it hit the wrench mode server? So when when someone's when your website's in wrench mode and it you know and somebody goes to it, it actually redirects off to a wrench mode you know wrenchmode.com. I've got I've got a plan for how it could actually serve it under your domain under SSL and everything else. Right now it just directs them off to wrenchmode.com, um, and so then the live updates are actually that's actually Elixir WebSocket stuff. It's really neat stuff. So so it doesn't do anything through your server, but it could. I mean, if you wanted it to run under your domain name, that would also be like another like paid feature, like if you want to keep them on your domain. So. So why did you choose Phoenix to run the to run right now? I wanted an excuse to play with Elixir, um, and I love it. I thought, I mean, I thought Elixir was really great, and I, I really liked Phoenix. And if you're a Rails developer, like. I've been, I've been a Rails developer for a long time now, it's like since the beginning, and Phoenix now is like Rails in the beginning, where like, which is frustrating in a lot of ways, because you're like, oh wow, I remember when we used to have to do this in Rails too. Like, you know, you know like, it's, but it's, Elixir's a really nice language and it's a lot of fun to play with, um, and I was just, I really liked it. So, uh, I always look for an excuse to, you know, try new stuff. I would highly recommend Elixir if you're looking to, you know, just, play around with something. Especially if you're about to do something in Go. Like, <laughs> if you're like, I'll write this in Go, the answer is no, you'll write this in Elixir. <laughs> so. Well, so, so the, the thing where a, a lot of things return a, um, return a tuple, where the first thing is either OK or error, yeah. and then the second item in the tuple is you know, what, either your response or something, that, that definitely brought flashbacks to Go. <laughs> Well, and just, just Elixir's way of thinking about agents and state and processes and things like that, what you would do with Go where you're like, I'm going to spawn off a bunch of Go routines, like you can do that in Elixir with agents, and I just find Elixir to be a little bit nicer to work with than I do Go. So you said you were using the Elixir website, so that's channels that's doing the wild updates. Yeah, I'd have to think about it. It's been, it's, been, it's been a while since I looked at it, but yeah, it's like, a, it's like the channels in Phoenix, like, I can't remember exactly, but it's, yeah, it's the, it's the built-in Phoenix WebSocket stuff yeah. that just, and that's what handles the live updates. Just like actually being able to look Yeah, exactly. Like you can, and, and I like, I love the website, like, I, I don't know, I probably shouldn't talk for very much longer, but in Phoenix, 
like in Rails, the idea of you know you've got like four Pumas or you know f you know four passenger th for threads all running. Like the idea that you would like open a long-lived connection to any one of those is suicide. Like because then you, like as soon as you have more than four people on your website, your whole ser your whole server locks up. In Elixir, you know with Phoenix, it's fine. You can open ten thousand. You can open a hundred thousand of them, and Phoenix will just open it up and set it aside, and then it's ready for the next one. So it's really cool stuff, and you can just it sort of changes the way that you think about some of those interactions. So. Phoenix is a very Rails-like framework for Elixir. So Phoenix is to Elixir what Rails is to Ruby. All right, Justin. Or do you just copy paste in your Yeah, you install it. There's, the gem's called uh, Wrench Mode Rack. Um, and so you just do gem install Wrench Mode Rack. And then um, there's, you know, after you sign up, there's a little bit of like, you know, information on, you know, how to install it with, with Ruby. Uh, it actually, and I've also got a uh, Node.js plugin for Express. So, ironically, I don't yet have an Elixir plug version of it. <laughs> but um, so it works for it works for Node and it works for Rack. Um, and and that's one of the reasons that I wanted to do it in this fashion is I can I can write these really thin, dumb middleware layers for each different. And then, and then you were asking about like. I can envision making something that's like an Nginx module or like an Apache kind of module that's so you can sort of push it further down your stack if you want. And so you could turn and you know and then you could you know rip out your whatever and just have, you know, if if you want to switch from Puma to thin or whatever. So by the way, if I if I didn't have this tool and I and I knew that I had to do that switchover, um, it would probably take me longer. I would reduce the TTL on the DNS and I would probably do some trick at at like switching the IP address and then switching it back. Yeah, I don't like doing a lot of that DNS monkey business. Yeah, like, but if you have to, if you have to, yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, you can definitely do round robin. I mean, even so, if you only need two servers, you can do round robin load balancing. So if you switch the IP, you can. I mean, there's a lot of tricks you can do if you have to throw up a maintenance mode, but none of them let you just drop in on gem and. That's, that's my main thing. Is I, I get in a lot of arguments with people about they say like, well, zero downtime is not that hard. And my response to that is like, actually it is from like the perspective of it's going to take you more time than this. Yes. Like bring in your website. Or like if you're having that great day and you need to like make a change or something like that, you do not have time to mess with like zero downtime strategies. Like you need to just, you know, upgrade your database now, not figure out some of that, you know, DNS failover monkey business. Because that's, it's really hard to do. Like, once you understand it, it's not that complicated. But like the first time you're like, oh, I got it wrong. And now everything's messed up. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's my thing with a lot of the zero downtime stuff is it's like, it's actually, if you get it wrong, suddenly you have a lot of downtime. Like. <laughs> and with that. <laughs> Any other questions? Nope. Nope. I'll answer you in a second. This video has been sponsored by Rietta Incorporated. Learn more today at RIE.